Hi everyone, I'm Stacy Reardon. So far, we've talked about how TDM data might be sensitive data, even when it's public. Sometimes it might be decontextualized from the context in which it was created, and it may have been created or used in ways that are enabled by structural racism and unequal power balances. We've also considered approaches to obtaining consent for TDM research, including when consent might not really be consent, a move from consent to avoiding harm, and ways in which the common rule typically doesn't apply to TDM research, rendering consent unnecessary from a regulatory perspective. It's time to start considering the philosophical underpinnings of different research ethics approaches to find that we, as individuals or a community, might like to adopt for TDM research. In this first video for ethics, theory, and practice, we'll talk about available ethical frameworks and questions to consider. In the second video, we'll see examples of a few research teams who attempted to put these into practice. We can choose from a variety of ethical approaches to moral problems. Here, we'll look at three ethical frameworks. Imagine you have the capacity to help someone in need. Furthermore, helping them would not diminish your own capacity. Would you provide this help? A deontologist would recognize an obligation to help in accordance with a moral rule, such as do unto others as you would have them do unto you. A virtue ethicist would act based on the fact that helping the person would be charitable or benevolent. And a utilitarian would point to the fact that the consequences of doing so will maximize well-being for the greatest number of people. Each of these normative ethical frameworks places emphasis on moral responsibility and the agency of the individual. However, moral agency assumes free will. This is potentially a problem for TDM research because there may not be free will of all of the participants for a few reasons. First, power imbalances complicate the idea of choice or free will. And second, data could be used beyond the purpose for which it was originally intended. Content creators may not have anticipated how their data would eventually be used. There is also the distributed morality of big data, also referred to as there being dependent agency, where the ethics of data use in a networked framework may be dependent on the morality of other actors or factors in that network. An alternative ethics framework might help. Ethics of care, also known as feminist ethics, is premised on relationships and care as a virtue. This framework under recognizes uneven power relationships. It builds into research design and accounting for who possesses power or authority in any given situation. Through its focus on relationships, it also enables a progression from accounting for the rights and obligations of individuals to the rights and obligations of groups. Yet its focus on relationships can, in practice, make it very challenging to apply especially for very large data sets. Both utilitarianism and ethics of care involve some degree of avoiding or at least minimizing harm. It's also important for us to probe what we actually mean by harm. In What's the Harm? The Coverage of Ethics and Harm Avoidance in Research Methods Textbooks, Dixon and Quirk identified four categories of harm. Psychological harms, which refer to the participant's well-being and are inclusive of things like distress, embarrassment, stress, and betrayal of trust, physical harms, which would include physical pain, injury, and death, legal harms, this includes legal implications from exposure. Imagine here photos of underage drinking, being seen at a protest against a tyrannical government and facing potential action, or depicted as a migrant subject, subjecting one to potential deportation and social harms. These include damage to relationships, social standing, or reputation, and would include impacts on personal and employment relationships through the disclosure of information. The question of harm brings us to another question. Whose harm should TDM researchers be concerned with? The Belmont Report is set up to protect research subjects, but as we saw from Samela's Gamergate case study, the well-being of researchers is also important. So does our TDM ethics framework need to account for different types of research stakeholders, like researchers and readers? Dixon and Quirk also observed that the research ethics textbooks they studied failed to treat ethics continually and holistically 
throughout all stages of the research process. Instead, they approached ethics as a one-time consideration with a focus on avoiding harm during data collection. However, as they note, ethical issues permeate and unfold beyond the research design stage and throughout the entire research process, end quote. While textbooks may focus on ethics as an event like obtaining informed consent, scholars advocate for ethics to be considered in an ongoing fashion. So again, if we're going to adopt a harm minimizing framework, we should think of how harm might arise for our stakeholders at different pro points throughout the research process. You may have observed that we have oscillated in, in this discussion between harm minimization and harm avoidance. Depending on whatever ethical model we've chosen, we may not be implementing a do no harm approach, but rather a risk benefit analysis. In elements of a new ethical framework for big data research, Vienna et al. advocate for big data researchers and review boards to incorporate systematic risk benefit assessments. These assessments would evaluate the benefits that would accrue to society as a result of a research activity, the intended uses of the data involved, the privacy threats and vulnerabilities associated with the research activity, and the potential harms to human subjects as a result of the inclusion of their information in the data. The decision about whether to proceed with the research based on these balance factors is not binary. In this video, we noted that there is a lack of established best practices when approaching ethical considerations in TDM projects. Rather, this is an area of evolving discussion that we can help shape. We might consider different ethical frameworks for approaching these issues, such as deontological virtue or utilitarian models or an ethics of care. We might consider different types of harm, such as psychological, physical, legal, and social, and we might consider the different groups who could experience such harm, whether those be subjects, fellow researchers, and consumers. Ethical considerations are not just one-time judgments, but extend throughout the research process. Our ethical framework may lead us to adopt an approach that prioritizes doing no harm, or an approach that seeks to weigh harm through a risk-benefit analysis. In the next video, we'll look at a few examples from research teams who have wrestled with ethical considerations in big data.